Hey, what's up, Sparkers? Today, I am going to show you a little bit about adding songs from your Apple Music or your Spotify library. So this is for iOS again, as usual. Um, I have a, an iPad, and so I have uh, access to both Apple Music and Spotify. So I'm gonna show you how that works real quick. There's a few little weird quirks about it. Um, some interesting things that I've sort of figured out over time and some of it kind of makes sense some of it maybe not so much but anyways I'll show you how it all works so first thing you do is go to these three little lines here and um, you have to have had connected to either of these services I think with Apple Music you're sort of automatically authenticated based on you know Apple Music on your device uh, and then Spotify I think it, it's gonna prompt you to log in maybe logging in through Facebook that sort of thing it's been a while since I've done that part of it but hopefully uh, you've got that part down. So when you click on one of these, if in Apple Music case, it's going to give you sort of two or maybe even three lists. For some weird reason, it's showing two purchased right here. And what's in this these purchased is all of the songs that I've ever sort of, per, well, purchased through uh, Apple iTunes store. Uh, and they're all just listed in individual um, as individual songs, which is, you know, fine. You can pick. And another thing to remember is you can only import 20 songs at, a, at any given time. So when you're adding songs to your, your, you know, when you're adding songs into the Spark app, just remember that you can only do up to 20. So those two purchase lists are basically individual tracks that I purchased over time, but it also has a list of all the albums that I purchased. And maybe maybe I didn't purchase an entire album, but I purchased a number of songs on a particular album, or if I've purchased the full album. Either way, it'll show up here. Uh, so yeah, these are all albums that I've purchased over time, or I've purchased a song on that album. So it's kind of interesting the way that all works out but you'll essentially find all the same songs in these two lists as you will in any of these. Um, but, but really, it has to do with the way the Spark app is talking to Apple Music and importing uh, the songs in your library. So those are just a couple of little things to keep in mind. Um, so if you want to select, if you happen to select an album that has more than 20 songs in it, which is pretty rare, but it happens. I have this frozen album for my kids, but that one has more than 20 songs, so it actually makes me pick the songs I want. Uh, if you pick an album that has less, it'll just automatically import the entire album. So that's one uh, little thing to note, is that it has less than 20 songs in it. You can import the full album all at once. Um, and so when I import that album, basically it's creating a running list of everything I've ever imported um, through that means. And that counts for both Spotify and Apple Music. You can see which uh, library I imported from over here. And then if you ever wanna just sort of delete this and maybe you're not happy with the way you imported that, you could just click on these three little dots and then delete. Uh, but this is gonna be a running list of everything I've ever imported um, since I you know, have installed this app. Um, and then at the very bottom here, it's interesting that they did this, but the there's two categories here. One is recently played and one is liked songs. Um, now, one thing to keep in mind about all of these lists, everything you've ever imported, like I said earlier, you can only import up to 20 at a time. And so um, horizontally, these lists are never going to have more than 20 on them. Um, and that goes for any import you do at any time. So if I only imported two songs at once, it's going to show up as two. If I imported 20, though, it's going to show all 20. And so all of these are basically individual, you know, imports of, of libraries. Um, another thing about all of this is that these songs are not actually imported from your iTunes library or your Spotify library for that matter. What it does is it grabs the, it's called metadata, so it's grabbing the information about those songs. Um, song title, uh, uh, ar artist name, album name, those sorts of things. It's, it's collecting that information from your library and then it's pulling all those songs actually from YouTube. So it's kind of interesting the way that works out. It's not actually you know, importing the song from, from Apple Music or from Spotify. It's just grabbing the information and then it's pulling the song into this app via YouTube. That's why if you click on one of these things, it's gonna show um, a little YouTube icon here, right there. So if the, if the song is available on YouTube, it's getting it from there. If that song is not available on YouTube, uh, it's just gonna sort of pull in the, the cover art um, for the import that you did from iTunes or Spotify. I'll give you a quick little example of that. Uh, oh, another thing is this seems to be 
re-rendering almost every single time you play a new song, which is a little odd. Um, if you're just scrolling through here and it's already populated some of these things, it won't um, re-render these things. But since I just played a song a second ago, for whatever reason, it's re-rendering everything. I think this has this is kind of to do with the new um, update, but I'm not 100% sure. So this is a, this is a band that uh, didn't necessarily have a music video for some of these songs. Uh, this one doesn't have a music video, so it's just going to show some cover art here. So there's the there's the cover art, there's the name of the track, the name of the artist, etc. Um, so that's how importing songs, well, importing songs works uh, within Spark. Um, it's very similar for Spotify. Uh, you just have to have logged into it. Um, the main difference here is these are your, a list of all your playlists, right? So. Theoretically, you have a handful of playlists in your Spotify library. I actually created a Spark one, so all of all of the songs I intended at some point or in, or have already done um, for my Spotify library, I've put in this playlist, and then I can just sort of select up to 20. Right? It's, it's right now it's a zero out of 20. So as I select these different songs, um, it, that total will keep getting up. You see the little checkbox being added over there, and then once I've selected all 20 that I want. I'll just uh, click tap on this import songs and then this is a new import um, and it'll populate here at the top of the list. Another interesting thing is uh, after you play a song from one of these libraries or from one of these imports, it's going to reorder um, the, uh, that one didn't play for some reason, but it's going to reorder all these lists. And I'm not too sure why it does that. I don't know. Again, it's has to do, it's similar to the re-rendering after you play a song, but it just sort of reorders all these things. And there's no discernible order that I could figure out. It sort of, sort of seems random. The only thing that stays the same is these two lists at the bottom. So your liked songs uh, and then your recently played songs. So any song that you like, and you can do that by, uh, by tapping. So let, you're playing the song and you tap this little heart here. It'll add it to your liked. List. So right now it's already selected because I already had it in there, but that's how you can toggle that off and on. And uh, so that's how that works. Um, these two bottom lists here are always going to be the same. It's still re-rendering there, but that's generally how adding songs from Apple Music and Spotify works. Um, again, just to recap, it's not actually importing those songs from those libraries. It's just sort of capturing the metadata and it's pulling those songs in from YouTube. So occasionally because of that, you'll maybe see some uh, album art that isn't quite correct. Um, it's hard to see it right now because these things aren't rendered yet, but uh, occasionally you'll see a little icon that doesn't quite look right or sometimes even the song will be a little bit off or they'll have a music video version of that song rather than the, you know, the original track that you would be expecting. Um, by adding it from your library. So that's kind of the gist of how adding these songs into your library works. And if you noticed, um, it once you you import those, it go, it adds them, sorry, it adds them to this little profile thing over here. So that's a little different from this thing, which is your, your music um, for jam tracks and, and backing tracks and play-alongs. It's in this little section here called profile. So this sort of, you know, has my uh, log in here at the top or my my profile information and then these are all the things I've I've added to my my songs here So hopefully that helps you kind of understand how this works. It's a little bit funky at times, but um, You know, it's a definitely one of the, the cool features about this app is the ability to to add those songs in so thanks and help uh, this help someone. Thanks